Hey, Mike here from AMB. I've just been testing the all new Pivot Shuttle AM, which has just been released. So last year, Pivot released the Shuttle SL and the Shuttle LT. So the AM replaces the current existing Pivot Shuttle AM and sits right between the two. Let's take a closer look. The new Shuttle AM brings more travel to the Shuttle AM platform. The outgoing model had a 140mm back end with 160mm up front, whereas the new Shuttle AM has 148mm in the back end and 160 up the front. The best way to think about it is probably as an electronic switchblade, so bringing that really versatile trail and all mountain bike in Pivot's range, but with an electronic version. I was lucky enough to be over at the launch in Crested Butte in Colorado uh, and got a couple of epic all day rides on the bike. Um, so let's go over the de details. Some of the important changes on the Shuttle AM are around the frame, as you'd imagine. So uh, this is one of the, the outgoing Shuttle AM was one of the last bikes from Pivot to still have their old design. So with, uh, without the vertical orientated shock. So Pivot have moved to a near vertical shock orientation, which do a few things to help the ride of the bike. Firstly, it means that they don't have to have the shock like attached to a certain point in the top tube. It means that that part of the frame can be lighter and designed to be both light and stiff and also lets them tune standover height a little bit more as well. So there's been an update in geometry. It's a little bit longer and partly that's also to accommodate the smart system battery in there too. Um, but it is also lighter and overall it's a tiny bit slacker with a slightly steeper seat angle too. So you kind of get uh, the geometry changes that you would expect on an updated trail and all mountain bike. Another change with that is it opens up the whole main triangle a lot more. So you've got room for a bottle cage on the down tube, which also means you can put the new uh, range extender battery from Bosch in there if you need more than the stock 750 watt hour battery. The large I tested when run in the low uh, geometry setting has a 476 millimeter reach with a 64.1 degree head angle and 76.4 degree seat angle. Now, if you were to run it in the high setting, uh, obviously lift the bottom bracket height a tiny bit, but it steepens it up by about 0.4 degrees and lengthens the reach out by about four mil too. We ran in the low setting because typical Colorado trails are pretty fast and open and we didn't really need any, any more pedal clearance. On that, they do all come with 165 millimeter cranks, which was the perfect choice for, for most e-bikes. Pivot spec, uh, 44 mil offset fork on the switchblade. It's got 160 mils at the front with the 148 uh, via the DW link suspension in the back. The, it's a float X on all three models that they offer and a Fox 36 on all three models as well. Now, the bike is coil compatible. So while there is a Shuttle LT, which is the longer travel e-bike, the you can put a coil shock on the Shuttle AM if you are kind of wanting to get that real supple stroke on there. As you'd expect with any modern mountain bike that's just been released, all the cable routing is internal and it's super neat as well. Um, with Pivot moving to using Bosch on this bike, they have taken advantage of some of the new Bosch smart system uh, accessories with their e-bike system. So you've got the wireless remote, which means there's no cable coming from the remote uh, to the bike. Uh, and then it's got the head unit that sits inside the top tube and you can actually ditch the remote entirely and run just off that. Also, what's really cool is the speed sensor in the back end is a magnet that sits underneath the valve with uh, the, the pickup for that being in the motor. So there's no extra cable running along the, the chainstay or a magnet on the rotor. Uh, it's not needed at all. It's just the one on the wheel as it comes around. So it's super neat. As with the other shuttle mo models, the Shuttle AM runs a fully internal battery, but one that's not easily removable. Uh, the thinking behind that is it does mean Pivot can have a more compact down tube uh, to house the, the battery in there. Um, there being three models in the range, the top two models have the 750 watt hour battery, while the lower end model has a 625 watt hour battery. But you can still get that 250 uh, watt hour range extender um, for either of those either of those bikes. Uh, and you could upgrade the battery in the smaller uh, from the smaller size if you wanted, because the frame can adapt to take either size. So as mentioned, Pivot have three models in the Shuttle AM. The top spec is the Shuttle AM Team, and that's got the SRAM XX transmission throughout. It's also got um, DT Swiss's new hybrid carbon uh, wheels, so that's carbon e-mountain bike specific wheels, based on a 240 kind of hub internal, so it's quite high performance and a, and a 
uh, really strong rim designed for e-bike use. They even got the Praxis carbon cranks and Pivot's own uh, Phoenix carbon handlebar, doing everything to get the weight as low as possible while keeping the ride quality as high as possible. This is also the only bike that Pivot have that uses the new Bosch Performance CX race motor. Um, the race motor is pretty unique. Compared to the regular motor, it's, it costs about twice as much for a company to put it in there. Drops a little bit of weight with a magnesium outer. Um, you know, that's 150 grams or so and helps with the weight management, but it also gives much more acceleration. So uh, the, the Bosch race motor has race mode in there too. So above turbo, you go to race mode, which gives up to 400% assistance. So it gives you a lot of uh, very hard acceleration. What's also unique is the extended boost. So that's something that um, Bosch have on their uh, smart system anyway, where it gives you an extra small amount of acceleration and assistance once you stop pedaling, perfect for hitting a lip or getting up a tech feature, whereas extended boost on the race mode does that for about twice as long. So if you think about um, riders tackling any of those power stages in the uh, Enduro World Cup uh, E-Series, that's exactly what's here. And funnily enough, that actually relates very well to this motor. You're not gonna see many of these race motors around. Uh, each brand globally can only get 500 for them to use. Um, and they need to have an athlete racing in the EDRE. So we'll probably have a few of this model in Australia, but it won't be many. So if you, if you think you need the, that top spec model, you need to get in, in touch with your pivot dealer. It'll sell for $23,999. So yeah, no small chunk of change, but one pretty impressive bike. The Shuttle AM Pro is the model I tested, so it's got the same frame as is the Fox factory suspension and dropper post. Uh, what changes would be the wheel set, so you've got a DT Swiss hybrid alloy wheel set instead of carbon, and the Praxis alloy cranks instead of carbon, and probably the big difference is the motor. So instead of the Bosch race motor, you've got the regular uh, Bosch Performance CX smart system in there, which is an exceptional system. So it's got the 750 watt hour battery, you've still got the wireless remote, uh, you've got all those regular functions and all the fully, uh, full adjustability through the Bosch Flow app as well. Drivetrain is a little bit different, so you step down to a SRAM Transmission XO T-Type group set, um, which having tested the GX system on an e-bike recently, I really am astounded at how well this group set shifts un under the load of an e-bike, so that's a really great spec choice. Um, and then Shimano round out the group set with a set of XT four piston brakes on there. This bike is in stock at the moment in Australia and sells for $17,999. And the third model in the Shuttle AM lineup is the Shuttle AM Ride. This one sells for $13,999. Again, it's got the same frame, it's got the same Bosch Performance CX uh, motor and, and, and parts in there. It does have a 625 watt hour battery, not the 750 watt hour battery. And the suspension is Fox Performance Elite still a 36 at the front and a float x in the back end and you still have the dt swiss hybrid alloy wheels in there too um, group set and and, and brakes wise you're looking at a mix between shimano xt and slx 12 speed gear um, so you get that high performance hyperglide plus shifting uh, top quality braking but you just do get that down to around the fourteen thousand dollars mark which is a whole chunk of change but given uh, how well the bike rides, which I'll go on into in a minute, um, and the uh, performance of the Bosch smart system uh, assistance in there, I think it is an exceptional e-bike to be looking at. The Shuttle AM is the first e-bike from Pivot to be using a Bosch system, and I think it's a fantastic choice on, on this bike. So with 85 Newton meters of torque in there and the options between the 625 or 750 watt hour battery size, um, I think Bosch have got the great, a great system for a bike that's designed to kind of take you out all day into the back country and take you to the big trails. Um, it is worth, noting how adjustable the Bosch smart system um, is in terms of the dynamic that it gives your ride. 
there's a whole lot of adaptability through the Bosch Flow app. So you can change you know, you know, where the, how quickly the assistance comes in in any of the four modes, um, what the maximum torque is, um, and basically how sensitive it is. And I think that's probably a key part to getting the most out of the system and the most out of how you want to use the bike. Because if you've got steeper trails, you're probably going to want uh, you know, the assistance kicking in faster, um, or you might even want to get a little bit more out of the eco mode so it's a bit more useful than it could be otherwise. But all that adjustability is there for you. What I really liked with the Bosch Smart System on the Shuttle AM is the wireless remote over on the left hand side. So there's no extra cabling. In fact, you can even get rid of that if you don't want the mode selector there and just use the one in the head tube because you can, that's where you fire up the system and that's where you can see, get an indicator of what your battery life is and what mode you're in and you can select the mode from there. So you can make it as simple as possible or run the mode selector on the, on the left hand as well. It's up to you. With the new Pivot Shuttle AM, Pivot have really got one of the most versatile e-bikes in their range. I think it's taken what was good with the Shuttle AM uh, original platform, which was you know, lightweight and really all purpose, and really taken that to um, the current modern expectations. With the Shuttle SL as your mid-power option and the Shuttle LT with your, your kind of 170, 160 um, full power option there too, the Shuttle AM walks that line between the two and what a big part of that is is something that's part of every uh, pivot dual suspension bike and that's the DW Link suspension system. I think when I first got onto the DW Link system on the Shuttle AM, I thought I was wallowing around in the rear travel a fair bit but I actually had to look at the bike and how it was working and what I realised is that the rear suspension was working independently of what I was doing. So, so often a lot of rear suspension systems that we ride either do bob around a lot from pedal input or they firm up quite a lot from pedaling. So you do kind of get the impact when you're doing technical climbs, which is kind of what you want to do on an e-bike, right? Um, whereas the DW Link with the Pivot Shuttle AM meant you could be pedaling around with no loss through the suspension system, but the suspension can still act in its own way. So once I kind of got used to the fact that the movement there wasn't inefficiency, but it was just, uh, you know, the rear suspension system, system finding gobs of, gobs of traction to keep on going up some pretty steep and gnarly climbs, it was amazing what I could take the, the Pivot Shuttle up. Obviously, climbing is one thing on a bike like the Pivot Shuttle AM, but you're not carrying around a 160mm travel fork and 148mm travel in the back end for nothing. So while we did a couple of really long rides in uh, outside of Crested Butte in Colorado, we did some classic big climbs on double track and single track, but it was all to gain really cool descents. And that's where the, sh that's where the Shuttle AM comes alive. So thinking that it is essentially a pivot switchblade but with a motor, you've got a bike that can really send it on the descents. This is a bike that is probably at home on just about any trail system in Australia and it's the same in the US too. It's one of their most popular models um, and so the E version being the Shuttle AM should be the same. I found it was a really balanced bike on the descents. Uh, because you stay nicely centered between the wheels, you're very composed. With the 160 fork at the front, it did keep the front end nice and high, which I, um, I appreciated because obviously we're riding every single trail blind, um, but it wasn't pushing. So you weren't on a bike that was so raked out that on the flatter kind of backcountry trails that we're on, that you had the front end pushing through corners. So it doesn't need, you know, this bike doesn't need super steep trails to come alive, which is a real bonus. I also found some updates with the geometry that they've been able to do with the, with the shock placement is keeping the, uh, the standover height lower. And given a lot of the trails we're on were pretty narrow, um, and again, riding them blind, I found that it wasn't too much of a bulky bike, despite being you know an e-bike, which is heavier than a, a regular trail or mountain bike, to kind of move around on the bike to keep it going where you want to go, especially on the, on the steep climbs and on the really narrow kind of bench cut trails that we're riding too. So it's a very easy bike to keep riding in a dynamic fashion, as opposed to just being a passenger, which can happen on some quite long, low and slack and, and big travel e-bikes. As with any high-end mountain bike, you will be rewarded spending the time to get the suspension set up just right. I only had two, two days riding the bike and I got it pretty much bang on, but I think like, like with any, uh, any high-spec bike, if you spend the time to get your pressures and uh, rebound damping and, and volume spaces spot on, uh, you'll get the most out of a bike like the Pivot Shuttle AM.
I'd struggle to find any downsides on the Pivot Shuttle AM. Uh, some riders might want a slightly heavier casing than a Maxxis XO Plus casing. That's, I think, one of the easiest things to change. Um, as mentioned earlier, the transmission group set on the Shuttle AM that I rode was exceptional. Uh, how it manages shifts under the load with the extra load of an e-bike's weight and an e-bike's power assistance um, is second to none. And the chain security on descents was also, um, you know, beyond compare. So I think Pivot have done a great job using the SRAM transmission group sets on their top two models. Overall, I'd, I'd like to think what Pivot have really done is used use the shuttle name, but not in an ironic sense. It's easy to think that a uh, long travel e-bike um, is gonna be to self shuttle up, you know, some fire trails to, the, to, to do some rad descents. And yes, you could do that, but you'd be missing some of the benefits of the shuttle AM, which is the fact that it's a fantastic riding trail and all mountain bike that is well more than capable of navigating some pretty gnarly climbs right out in the backcountry to get to some get to some wild descents and with the 750 watt hour battery in there in, in the top two models you've got all the battery power you need to take on some big all day rides consider that you can get the 250 watt hour um, range extender from bosch as well and you've got a bike that's going to be set for some pretty big adventures out in on some wild trails and you know i can't think of anything better than that So my take on the Pivot Shuttle AM, I think Pivot have done a fantastic job reimagining what their, their most popular e-bike should be. If you take the DNA of the Pivot Switchblade and put a motor on it, that is what the new Pivot Shuttle AM is. It's a bike that is gonna be at home on just about any trail system in Australia um, and probably in plenty of other countries around the world too. If you need something with longer travel and, and slacker geometry, Pivot have that in the Shuttle LT. If you prefer a mid-power system with a slightly shorter travel to be a little bit more agile, Pivot have that in the Shuttle SL. So it really rounds out their, their whole e-bike range and I think it means that they've got probably one of the most well-rounded e-bike ranges on the market. The downside, they're a boutique brand. They, they're not a cheap bike, um, but I can see the value there, especially using such, such a high quality e-bike system from the Bosch Smart System, and especially with the models that have the new SRAM uh, transmission T-type group sets on there too. If you've got any other questions about the new Pivot Shuttle AM, uh, check out our full review over on the AMB website or drop a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Or better yet, get on the phone to your local Pivot dealer and I'm sure they can answer all the questions for you as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get all our latest content. Cheers.